Stand, Neil, Now What, Season 2, Episode 31, Life Changes. Hi, my name is Karen. I like to say that I'm the good kind of Karen. I am first and foremost a daughter of God, a wife, mom of two, and I recently came home to the Catholic Church. I love my faith so deeply that I want others to love it too. Whether you are a cradle Catholic, Catholic curious, or you have come home to the Catholic Church as an adult like I have, Stand, Kneel, Now What is the show for you. Through my love and lots of blunders, my goal is to help you along your faith journey. Our paths may be different, but all of our roads need to lead home so that we can be with our Father. And doing more of this interview type podcast, which is phenomenal. And I'm just really excited to see how this grows. I know I want to do more of the Catholic vocabulary series. Hopefully that will be in October. And then I have something really exciting to start season three with that I just, I need to have some time to dive deeply into a book that I was given to be able to share a lot of information with you guys. So that being said, I know I typically do a new Catholic prayer every three weeks, but With the state of our country and just everything going on, I would like to continue doing the prayer to Our Lady of Guadalupe, the patroness of the Americas. I just think it's a beautiful prayer. It gives me goosebumps every time I read it. And so we are going to continue with that probably until the election, (laughs) just so that we can have this prayer for us and for whatever happens and you know however things go we know that our lady of guadalupe and all the saints and jesus and everybody is looking down on us and um just spoiler alert we know that jesus wins no matter what so (laughs) here we go in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit oh god our creator from your provident hand we have received our right to life liberty and the pursuit of happiness You have called us your people and given us the right and the duty to worship you, the only true God, and your Son, Jesus Christ. Through the power and working of your Holy Spirit, you call us to live out our faith in the midst of the world, bringing the light and the saving truth of the gospel to every corner of society. We ask you to bless us in our vigilance for the gift of religious liberty. Give us the strength of mind and heart to readily defend our freedoms when they are threatened. Give us the courage in making our voices heard on behalf of the rights of your church and the freedom of conscience of all people of faith. Grant, we pray, O Heavenly Father, a clear and united voice to all your sons and daughters gathered in your church in this decisive hour in the history of our nation, so that with every trial withstood and every danger overcome, For the sake of our children, our grandchildren, and all who come after us, this great land will always be one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Still get goosebumps. All right. So I, at the beginning of this episode, I talked about a realization that I came to I don't know, maybe last week, it was recently. And in this process of creating this podcast, I have just been placed with the desire to be a Catholic speaker and to speak more to youth about God because maybe down the line, I'm ready to share. I'm not ready to share it yet. When I went to college, I broke off from my Christian faith pretty severely. And I lived a very worldly life. And I have, I have mentioned that before, so that's nothing new. But my whole goal was to kind of be a mentor for kids before they go to college, to show them that, you know, being a Christian is like way cool. (laughs) And 
it hit me the other day that this big life change that I've made is a pretty cool stepping stone to what my overall vision, hopefully, and God's vision for me is. And so the big life change that I made, as many of you, if you've listened to past episodes may know, and if you're brand new, welcome, here is my big life change. I used to be a public school teacher and it just wasn't fitting correctly for me anymore. I felt really called to be able to share my faith on an everyday basis. And I just can't do that in a public school setting. And let me also say, I 100% agree that teachers in public school settings should not share their faith. They should not share their faith. They should not share their political beliefs. They should not be sharing what many teachers do share. And a lot of my students in the public school did know that I was Catholic. They also attended the Catholic church that I attend. And some of them still attend and they still, you know, come up to me. They're like, hey, this is uh, that happened this last Sunday. It was really kind of cool. So I'm not saying that I would do that in a public setting at all anyway, but I felt called to leave the public school setting so that I could share my faith on a regular basis. So I applied last spring-ish to the local Catholic school, not really expecting it to go very far. (laughs) <laughs> or to work out. That was the other thing because um, I don't know if a lot of people know this. Public school teachers don't get paid a whole lot anyway. And then private school teachers get paid even less. And so I just didn't expect everything to work out. And it was just kind of odd that it did. And I just couldn't say no to the offer that I was given. And so I decided to step out in faith and accept the position. I now teach English language arts at the local Catholic school and I love it. (laughs) I know that was a little trepidation because I'm almost scared to say it out loud too much. I absolutely love it. And when I was looking back on all of these visions and this this idea that God has placed in my heart to be a Catholic speaker and to share my faith with youth, that's exactly what I get to do on a daily basis. And it just hit me that this was what I've been praying for. This is exactly what I prayed for all last year was to just be able to be a light for God and be able to talk to youth and and share my faith and be able to kind of guide them to be saints in the making. And, you know, now I'm coming from a place where I couldn't even share my faith at all. And I, I would sometimes hide from wearing crosses or crucifixes. And now it's a complete 180. Like I get to worship with my students. We have an all school mass on one day a week. And then we have an optional mass on another day of the week. And I get to worship with my colleagues and yeah, not everybody is Catholic, but I love that we all get to get together and we have a Bible study. I have, I'm part of a women's Bible study group and it's just phenomenal. Like it just is a breath of fresh air that is so needed for my soul right now. Like this is exactly what I needed. And, you know, God's providence and timing is a hundred percent perfect. And sometimes we just have to trust that he knows what our next step should be. And I believe that God gives us free will in choosing, you know, if we're going to listen to what he thinks and knows what the next step should be or what like we know better, (laughs) which is how I live my life a lot. Like thinking I know better, like, no, God, I need the money. I need blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go take this pay cut. And really I needed it. Like I needed to do this. And so let me just share a quick story 
The Catholic speaker, Paul J. Kim, came to speak at our high school. And I was just so moved by watching the students watch him. And I know that sounds very creepy and odd, but there's a part in his speech, and I'm, I'm sure he gives a similar speech at the high schools that he visits. But there's a part in his speech where he takes the kids in this meditative prayer and he tells the students and staff, because the staff completed this task too, he tells us to close our eyes and imagine ourselves in the gym by ourselves. And we're just kind of sitting and then Jesus comes and Jesus gives us a hug and tells us that things are gonna be okay and what we're going through right now is gonna be okay and that he is with us. Oh my gosh, guys, like it was so beautiful. And you know, I opened my eyes to kind of see what the students were doing. And there were, we have about 500 students at the high school that I'm at. Almost all 500 students had their eyes closed in prayer. And you could physically see the Holy Spirit move through them. And it's hard to describe, but I wrote an article about this for Catholic Mom. And I said, if we as Christians associate the Holy Spirit as a blaze of fire, then the gym was just a rampant wildfire for the Holy Spirit. It was so <laughs> moving and breathtaking all at the same time because sometimes what that's what the Holy Spirit does is he takes our breath away. And I just felt this sense of calm that I am supposed to be where I am right now. And it's such a beautiful thing when we're obedient to God in that way, when we take the step that we know God is calling us to. And I just want to challenge you all to do that. Take some time and discern, maybe go to adoration or just dive into scriptures, do some Lectio Divina. I love Lectio Divina. And that's part of what we're doing as part of the Bible study <laughs> that I'm in at the school I'm at. And to really ask God and pray, like, what is the next right step for me? And it may not be the step that you would choose because I'm not going to lie. This was not the step that I thought it would be. And just ask God where he wants you to step and, and step into that next right step with God, knowing that he knows better, knowing that he knows exactly what we need at exactly the right time. And he puts us in exactly the right place. And I have had this desire to do more Catholic speaking. And I, I get really bent out of shape sometimes that I'm not farther along in this journey and I'm not being asked to speak at Seek or Focus or, you know, even the local parishes. <laughs> and I just, I, you know, I get a little bit whiny with God when I, you know, I have this big dream that he's placed in my heart and it just doesn't seem to be coming to fruition. And it hit me as I was writing a speech that I'm going to give tomorrow in front of 500 high schoolers, <laughs> that my prayers have been answered and that my dream is being fulfilled. And no, it's not on this huge stage. And no, that's not where I am yet. But when I step out into faith, and I follow the path that God is laying before me. He puts me exactly where I need to be. My prayers have been answered. I'm getting to speak in front of 500 students. I'm getting to share my faith journey in hopes that they will also go on a faith journey. And I'm getting to share how much Jesus means to me in all of it. 
And that's exactly what I prayed for. And that's exactly what I get to do. And it's beautiful and wonderful. And this is my video diary where if I look back in 10 years and I go, you know what? I didn't get to do what I wanted to do. I want everybody to tell me, no, 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 Karen. You're doing it right now, tomorrow. You're doing it. And it's going to be wonderful. And I hope the Holy Spirit is as, is as visible <laughs> tomorrow as it was with Paul J. Kim. So this is my challenge to you. Listen, discern, go to adoration. If you feel like you are in a place where you don't know what that next right step is, go ask them and then actually do it. Actually take the next right step that God is pointing you towards. So I am going to ask for prayers that my speech goes well and that even if it doesn't, <laughs> that the students gain something from it. I'm speaking about the Eucharist and my journey home to the Eucharist and being able to take it after taking no sacraments when I was younger to becoming Methodist and taking King's Hawaiian bread and now becoming Catholic and being able to consume the Eucharist and how wonderful and beautiful that is. And I love it. I love that this is what I get to do. I love that I get to worship with my students and I get to go to adoration with them and my colleagues. I just, I absolutely love it. And you know, it just, God's path is beautiful and we just need to follow him where he's guiding us. So that's my challenge for you this week. All right. We have a couple of odd one outs to get to. So last week's odd one out with my friend Belinda your three choices were pumpkin bread, zucchini bread, and banana bread. Pumpkin bread came in at 25%. Zucchini bread came in at 75%. And poor little old punt, banana bread didn't get any votes. <laughs> so um, the majority of everyone obviously voted for zucchini bread. I actually like zucchini bread. My husband hates it. I said that in the previous podcast. My husband absolutely hates zucchini bread. Um, but the odd one out, I would have to say, is probably banana bread. I don't know. I have to be in the right mood. And I've had really good banana bread and then really awful banana bread. Like, I, <laughs> I've had both. I've also had really good pumpkin bread and really awful pumpkin bread. So I don't know, but my vote is for banana bread. I'll be, you know, I'll be the odd one out with that one. And then the week before, the odd one out choices were burnt marshmallow, toasted marshmallow, and untraditional s'more because that happened to be National S'more Day. And the results for that one were burnt marshmallow got 31% of the vote, toasted marshmallow got 15% of the vote, an untraditional s'more got 54% of the vote. I am also going to be with the odd one out with this, with the, you know, loser team, the toasted marshmallow, because I don't like my marshmallow very toasted. All right. This one's odd one out choices are soup, stew, or chili, because we are in that season finally where we can enjoy all three of those. So your choices for this week's Odd One Out are soup, stew, or chili. As always, if the podcast has blessed you in any way, shape, or form, please like, share, subscribe. On Facebook, the podcast can be found at Stand Neil Now What with a question mark podcast. And then on Instagram, I can be found at stand underscore Neil underscore now underscore what. That is where you can also do the voting for the week and where I share other content as well. So please like, share, subscribe, and I look forward to talking to you all next week.